Today on the podcast, we're talking all about the importance of traveling as an art teacher. I'll talk to Alex Thornley, who came with me on last summer's Art Class Curator European Trip. We'll discuss the benefits of traveling with like-minded art teachers and how these journeys can transform and re-energize your classroom. Plus, you'll get all the details about the upcoming Art Class Curator trip to Budapest, Prague, and Vienna. Hi, everybody. Today's episode is a two-parter. First, we're going to talk with Alex Thornley, who traveled with me to Paris, London, and Amsterdam this past summer. And after the interview with Alex, we'll go into the info session that I held about our upcoming trip to Budapest, Prague, and Vienna. So if you are interested in that trip, stay tuned after the interview with Alex for more information about that. This is Cindy Ingram, and welcome to the Art Class Curator Podcast, where we're taking art out of the dark with thoughtful explorations and in-depth interviews designed to ignite curiosity and delight in art classrooms everywhere. I am so excited to welcome Alex Thornley to the podcast. Welcome, Alex. Hello. And so Alex went on my Europe trip this past summer to London, Paris, and Amsterdam, and I thought she would be a great person to talk to, talk about what the experience was like. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and your background and experience? Okay. I am from Western Pennsylvania, uh, born and raised. I went to school for art education. I'm now teaching at a little teeny tiny itty bitty Catholic school I have two levels of preschool up to sixth grade. I grew up with a very crafty mother, so I definitely got my artistic genes from her. And right now, an art class inspired by my mother, who has been making lots of quilts, we're doing geometric origami. So we're making kind of quilt patterns with origami, and I've never done origami, so it's been a learning experience for me as well as the kids, (laughs) but I just love it, and I'm having a great time teaching. This is starting my third year. Awesome. I have a hard time teaching origami because I don't have very good patience when it comes to instructing yeah on yeah small <laughs> little just, steps you know I'm trying to tell them like, you have to be patient when you do it and they see me getting frustrated <laughs> with it so we I'm like just, yelling at them like come on can't you figure it out and I'm like can't we just talk about big ideas let's talk uh-huh. about big ideas So why did you choose to go on our trip last summer? Well, I have wanted to travel as long as I can remember. I've always wanted to travel, but I am not a person who travels well alone. I need a group or at least people who know at the end of the day I should be in a certain place. (laughs) So it was very appealing to have a group of art teachers to travel around with because who better to see a new country with than people who are like-minded and would be interested in doing the same activities as opposed to if I went with some of you know my college friends, they might not want to spend the entire day walking from museum to museum in London or you know visiting the palace. They might want to do different activities. So it was very appealing, the idea of like-minded people going to places and wanting to do similar things. Maybe not the same thing. We all kind of did different things on different days, but there was always somebody who wanted to do something. So traveling with a group, because I'm too scared to do it by myself, (laughs) and a group of art teachers, you know, doesn't really get any better than that. (laughs) Yeah, I love that too, because, you know, I usually will travel with my husband or friends, and they go to museums with me. And But I always feel a lot of pressure. Like, I have to be a certain way at the art museum, or I have to, or I feel guilty that we're taking too much time. And so it's nice. So I'm with people who just totally get it. They're right. yeah. Go stand in front of the painting for an Mm -hmm. hour. It's fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let's do it. So that, I loved that too. So what were you most worried about before you left? (laughs) <laughs> this is probably going to make you laugh. I was worried that I would embarrass myself because my <laughs> art history is not very fine too. Oh. So I was actually like studying before I left because oh. I didn't really know what to expect. And I thought it would be like a field trip with art teachers. Like, okay, we're going to go to this museum and we're going to stand up front. And Cindy's going to tell us about this art and we're going to have a discussion. <laughs> so I was a little bit nervous that it would show my art history is not, you know, my best art teacher asset, but I was pleasantly, I was very happy when we got there to see that (laughs) it was more just going to the museums and hanging out and doing your thing. And, you know, we'd have these really casual conversations sometimes, or we would just kind of split up and then meet back in the lobby at a certain time, which was also nice. If everybody wanted to see something different, then you can see whatever you wanted and you didn't really have to worry about 
offending anyone or you know missing out on something that you really want to see. So that was my biggest worry. And, <laughs> and I was worried about the same thing. Not worried about my art history knowledge, although I think we were all worried about that to some degree. But I didn't know what it would be like in terms of what would people want from me? Like, were they expecting me to lead them from museum to museum? Because I was like, that doesn't sound like I would enjoy that as a person. <laughs> so I just went and I was like, we'll just see what happens and see what everyone wanted. And it seems like everyone else wanted like the same thing I did is just yeah. enjoy the experience together. Like, yeah, it was really nice. Anyone would just kind of say, you know, I was thinking about going to Victoria and Albert today. And then a few people would be like, oh, that sounds interesting. I think I'll go there. And then maybe someone else said, well, I kind of wanted to go to the British Museum today. So, you know, we all kind of split up and, and did our own things. And that was nice to spend time with small groups of different people within the bigger group. That was really cool. Yeah, that was great for me too. Just it was very much more laid back than I mean, it was a proper vacation. Yes. But with, you know, travel, it was really nice. Definitely. And we learn a lot just by going. We don't need to be. Yeah. The go ahead gives you great tours too. So Mm -hmm. it was a good mix of learn and vacation. And yeah, yeah. So what were you most excited about before you left? I was most excited about hearing different languages. Mm. I just think it's really beautiful to like walk around and not know what people are saying, but they're just carrying on with their business, especially in Amsterdam. I noticed that really big time in Amsterdam walking around. We got a little bit lost the one day and I just remember walking through like a really busy, we ended up on a really busy crowded street, finding our way back to the hotel. And I just was in bliss. I was so happy just walking down this crazy busy road. It felt like I was in New York, but you just hear, I mean, I hear someone speaking Russian and French and Italian, and I don't even know what language I'm hearing, but it's beautiful. <laughs> and I, I found myself getting irritated when other American tourists or other, you know, people from the United <laughs> States were floating around. So I was like, I'm in, I hear you all the time. Like, go somewhere else. I want to hear these new, <laughs> these new languages. So that was really the biggest thing for me was language. And public transportation is really interesting for me, What which cities are easy to navigate without a car or a bus, you know, mm-hmm. and I really liked London's underground system. The tube was very user friendly. So that was nice to get around the city and just doing the tourist things like touristy things because they, for the locals, you know, it's just Big Ben. They drive past it every day on their way to work. So I always think it's kind of fun to go and look at the tourist things and think about how many people just walk past it every single day and how many people will travel hundreds or thousands of miles just to see it. So I always think that that's pretty neat. Yeah. And the food, of course. Food. Oh yeah, the food. (laughs) Food. I've done, I think I decided when I was in Paris, I was like, I'm going to come home and eat only cheese and bread. And I have pretty much stuck to that for a good several months, like lunch. I'm like, I'm going to have cheese and bread today. Absolutely. And and I've been drinking more wine. I'm just like, I just, I, that's all I drink now is red wine. I used to hate red wine. and. too. I just started drinking it right before the trip. And then when we were in France, I drank exclusively red wine. And then when I needed to rehydrate, I'd get some water in there. But it was, I mean, they just, it was all good. And it was cheap, which is appealing too. So we've already mentioned some of the highlights for you, but what are some of the things that stick out the most? Well, Harry back? Potter was super fun. <laughs> yes. What we did for Harry Potter was very, very fun. And I, that was kind of, at the bottom of my list before I left of things that I thought I would enjoy. I mean, I knew I would enjoy it, but I was like, oh yeah, it'll be cool to just see how Harry Potter's made, what they did with it. I mean, it's truly a museum. It's a museum of the franchise and how everything is made and the art and the costumes and the makeup, the hair, the paintings. It just blew my mind. But besides that, of course, the art, I got to visit seven museums. Some of them weren't technically museums, but seven artsy places while we were out there, which was really, really cool. So in England, when we were in London, the first day we went to the Victorian Albert Museum and I walked inside and saw a massive (laughs) Chihuly sculpture. And I did a really long unit on glass sculpture last year. All of my kids made Chihuly sculptures out of transparency paper and Sharpie. So I was really excited to see something that I am passionate about, that I teach a lot about. I go to the Glass Center here in Pittsburgh pretty often to see demos and look at what people are making. So that was definitely a highlight to walk in 
in this new country, this new city, and see like a Chihuly. It's just like home. And I also got to go to the British Museum, which was massive, and we didn't have a lot of time there. But it was still really, really neat to see they had more historical art in the British Museum. But my favorite museum in London was definitely the Tate, because I lean more towards modern and abstract art. I like bright colors and non-representational and really having to stretch yeah. to find a meeting. So it was really cool at the Tate. And I saw so many artists that I've taught about in my few short years. There was a Calder. They had a whole room of Bridget Riley paintings. And I just adore all of her op art. They had the snail by Matisse, which was so cool to see in real life. It's so big. It's just overwhelmingly large. They had some Mondrian. They had a Warhol, which is neat because he's from Pittsburgh and I'm from Pittsburgh. He's kind of our little hometown hero. They had a Dali. They had a Rothko room. It was just really cool. And that was just in London. That was only in the first city. So there was just so much art and it was so incredible. And in France, I didn't go to any museums per se, but we went to see Monet's Gardens with the group and walking through his house, Chateau, his house, I guess. Yeah, yeah. his house. Yeah. Yeah, that was really, they had so much art in there. I mean, it was basically a cozy little, you know, Monet museum. That was crazy how much art. That was really neat. I wasn't expecting to see all of that. And then at the Palace of Versailles, there was a lot of paintings and just the architecture of the palace itself was pretty spectacular. And the gardens, oh my gosh, I was walking through the gardens. We had about 40 minutes before our tour and the gardens are massive and they warned us, don't go in too far because you will get lost. (laughs) So don't go, don't stray too far from the palace. So I'm walking through the gardens and I round the corner and there's these gorgeous sculptures and this waterfall and it's in this like hedge maze that I just found, you know, you just walk around the corner, there's all this art And recently I was at a museum in Pittsburgh and somebody did a painting of those sculptures of the scene. And I can't remember the name of it right now, but I was so excited. I was there. I saw that. It was so cool. (laughs) So that was really, really fun. And then in Amsterdam, of course, we all went to the Van Gogh Museum together, which was an emotional experience for me. Me too. The highlight. Don't highlight. Yeah. The audio tour was just incredible. I don't know that I would have had the same experience without the audio tour that was free from the museum. They give you the little tablet and the headphones and you just walk around and you click on the art that you're looking at and it tells you a story and you know, you'll know you hear voices over it and they explain what you're looking at and why he made it, what was going on in his life. So that really gave me an entirely new appreciation for Van Gogh or Van Gogh. Sorry, I realized I've been (laughs) pronouncing it wrong and I have been telling my kids that we will pronounce it properly. But Oh, good for you. (laughs) Yeah, but after saying Van Gogh my entire life, it's hard to say Van Gogh. But once I get to (laughs) saying it, then I'll stick with it too. And then the Rijksmuseum was just enormous. I mean, the paintings were enormous. The museum was enormous. It was beautiful. And I love the like tunnel underneath it. When you come in, they, they had live music playing. So when you're walking to the front doors, or at least they did the day, the day I oh, was there. The like above the, ground tunnel thing, right? It's yeah. like an old train station. Like a, like a breezeway. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's like an old, some sort of building. Yeah. I don't know if it used to be a palace and that was like where the carriages would come through or what, but that was a really cool way to kind of set the scene is just hearing Mm -hmm. all these classical instruments playing. And then you kind of walk into this big open area and yeah, there was just so much to see in every museum that I went to. I mean, I was tired and my feet hurt and we were doing so many things, but it's so worth it. Once you walk in the door and start looking at all this new pieces of art, it It's just amazing. Yeah. One thing, you know, I'm kind of noticing as you're talking is the things that you are coming away with or the things that were highlights weren't necessarily the ones that you thought were going to be the highlights. Right. Or. Yeah. Would you say that's true? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I didn't really know what to expect. And I go to the same museums over and over because I'm, you know, born and raised in Pittsburgh. So I'm pretty much limited to the Pittsburgh museums. And I do go... If I'm in different states or different cities, I do try to make my way into different museums, but it was just a whole different ball game to see museums in, in different countries and different cities and to be able to get to them, you know, on a train or in Amsterdam, we took a little bike taxi and that was really, really oh, did cool. You? Yeah, because oh, you know, cool. you're, 
you're in bike city so we're on the little like, bike road and there's bike <laughs> traffic and people are yelling at each other on their bikes and we're in this little bike taxi and it just it was just so thrilling yeah and every time i travel there's always I never know what I've gotten to the point where I just don't even have expectations anymore because I'm like, I don't know what's going to get me. What is it going to be this time? And even on this trip, I wasn't really like emotionally moved by anything really until near the end. And it was the Van Gogh Museum and I did not or Van Gogh Museum. And Mm -hmm. I wasn't necessarily expecting it. Like I was excited to go to it, but I've seen so many of his paintings before. I know a lot. I've read books about his life. You know, like I just, I feel like I knew him very well, but that was a total game changer for me. I'm in love with him now. Yeah. I mean, it's such an immersive experience. Yeah. It's only Van Gogh and they give you all this background information yeah. and you just have this whole new perspective of him where he's not just another artist on the wall. I mean, yeah. you are in, you're just surrounded completely. Yeah. And it's a really neat experience and it's so crowded but everyone is doing this little tour on their own. So you're just kind of standing next to people and listening to the same thing that they're listening to and kind of like sharing this experience quietly and then moving on to the next one. So I also (laughs) thought that was a neat thing. Yeah, definitely. It was amazing. So that is really wonderful. Thank you for sharing your experience on your trip. So let's see, what are some, for someone who is on the fence about whether or not they want to come on the next one, and as a reminder, the next one is to Budapest, Prague, and Vienna, which are very less museum-focused type places than this last trip we went on, and they're more cultural, experiential type of... Sure, yeah. But anyway, so anyway, what are your tips for someone who's sort of on the fence about going? Someone who's on the fence. Well, I will say for the past trip to London and Paris and Amsterdam, I didn't go there with a list of museums. I had no intention. You know, if people were going to a museum, I would tag along. It was really our tour guide. When I sat down with the map, he asked me, what are you interested in? I said, well, I'm here with the art teachers. I like art. And he just circled all the local museums And then I had a map with targets. I was like, okay, well, now I can go to these. You know, that was helpful. So even just telling the tour guide what you're interested in, like, I want to go have an amazing meal. What are the best restaurants? Or I want to go see a foreign film. Are there any theaters nearby? Or, you know, a play, whatever. Anything that you're interested in, you can find it. And there will be someone to help you. So that's very appealing. It's not just, I mean, I've been talking about art a lot just because that's you know what we focus on and that's what we love to do but there was a lot of things I did on the trip that were not art related and I know some of the people in the group went to see a stand-up comedy show and they really enjoyed that and we went on a lot of walks we just kind of walk around and find different things to do I went and got some just like street food with a girl in the group and we just walked around and had food and we found this big public square and there was public entertainment and people performing. So there's a lot of things to do. It doesn't just have to be an art museum. So anything that you like for anyone, you will be able to find it on the trip. Yes. There will be people who will want to do it with you too. And the more people that go, the more options you'll have. And, you know, we break off into our little groups. If you have more people, then there's more little groups and more interests. I highly recommend it. Cindy's wonderful to travel with. I had such a nice time with you, especially because you and I, it was just the two of us for the Harry Potter tour. And that was just so fun. I still talk about it all the time. I just had such a nice time. But I had a little bit of time with everyone in our group. And I had never met anyone or spoken with anyone really, except for you and my roommate, Katie, that you set me up with. So that's another thing. If you're on the fence, Mm -hmm. if you're all by yourself, you can get a roommate and then just chat with them a little bit. And you can become good friends. Katie and I are great friends. We still keep in touch. We talk pretty often. We're hoping... For her birthday in a few years, we want to travel somewhere again, maybe back to Amsterdam or somewhere new. But I'm excited to have, you know, lifelong friends and acquaintances from this trip that work in my field and are like-minded people because there aren't really a lot of art teachers around here that I socialize with. They're mostly older. They've been doing it. Some of them taught me, you know, they've been doing it as long as I've been alive, if not longer. And they're great to talk with, but it was also nice to just kind of hang out and, you know, not just be there for a work meeting. So there's something for everyone. If you're on the fence, I cannot recommend it more highly. I'm hoping to go on this trip. It's I'm not on the fence because I don't know if I want to go. I'm just on the <laughs> fence because because I might be starting grad school, so I might not be able to go. But I think those were all my tips that I had. 
I agree with you that like a lot of my highlights from the trip are not things I saw. Right. It was just moments that I had, you know, like sitting on a bench on the canals in Amsterdam. Oh my gosh. Watching the sunset, (laughs) you know, like at like 10 o'clock at night. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The sun is so late. late. And you know, there's just like little moments like that. Or like we went to like a German beer hall and just hung out. No, it was just like little like moments of conversation and fun. And like, those were the moments that I think that I remember the most and then I'll treasure the most. And that's, what's great about the going with a group like this. Mm-hmm. And like you said too, with the tour guide, like the tour manager, we, there was no, the stress of travel was completely taken away. Where you're going to go to the hotel, how are you going to get here to there, how to get places, how to change money, like all of that stuff. You've got someone there who you can just ask yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's his job to make you happy or her job. Yeah. I mean, exactly. that was Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. And that was another thing that I worried about, you know, getting a hotel reservation. Where do I stay? How do I get from point A to point B? I mean, my through this company, all I had to do was pay mm-hmm. and show up on time. So you show up to the airport and you, you know, do all your flying. And then once you get, once you land in your city, they have someone there with your name on it. They pick you up. My driver was fabulous. I'm pretty sure his name was Fernando. We had a wonderful conversation <laughs> in London. They drop you off at the hotel. The hotel people know that this group is coming. And when they find out that you're part of the group, they're very warm and welcoming. So people, you know, they want you to enjoy their city. And most people that I encountered, even that weren't involved with Go Ahead or involved with our group, were very friendly as long as, you know, you're polite and everything. Yeah. But yeah, that was another thing that worried me a little bit before traveling. But you don't have to worry about anything. You literally just have to show up on time. Like <laughs> They tell you what time to be there. As long as you're there, then you're fine. That's all you have to worry about. Everything else is taken care of. Yeah, it was magic because I'm such a type A person. Like I like to control. It was really hard for me at some points to not be in control. I mean, I was leading the group in a way, but it was like, I wasn't in control. It was, right. you know, Matthew, our tour director was in control. And I'm like, yeah. but that was good. It was a good experience for me to not have to worry. I just. Yeah. And I'm the exact opposite. Me. I don't want to control anything. So just tell me what to do <laughs> and when to be there and I will gladly show up. <laughs> Awesome. Well, okay. Thank you so much. But I, I'm going to ask you one more question. Okay. Unless you can think of anything else you want to say. Everyone who can go should go. You will not regret it. You will be so glad that you did and you will want to go as many times as you possibly can because <laughs> it was just so wonderful. And I hope I can go on the next one. <laughs> yes, we're going every summer. Awesome. Uh, so we're just going to hit all my bucket list items. So. Perfect. I, we're just, I'm just selfishly picking places I want to go. Hey, I mean, what <laughs> a better way to do it, you know? So, and I get to all these people to come with me. Yeah. Like, okay. So final question. I ask all my podcast guests this. Okay. And that is, which artwork changed your life? Okay. Well, I thought of one for this trip specifically, and it was The Night Watch, Rembrandt's The Night Watch. I never appreciated Baroque art. I thought it was boring and stuffy and dark and lame. I like bright colors and weird shapes. But one of the girls in the group convinced me to go with her. I almost went to the MoCA to see the Banksy exhibit, but she convinced me to go to the Rijksmuseum. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll go see it, whatever. And I rounded the corner and it was so massive. It literally like took my heart skipped a beat and took my breath away. I was like, I get it. I understand it now. (laughs) I'm in. How can I teach this? What can I do? It just completely changed my perspective. And it also humbled me because, you know, I am not, I don't get to just judge whatever I want just because I don't (laughs) like it doesn't mean it's not important or that I shouldn't teach it or at least mention it. So I definitely will help me be more open-minded for art styles or different artists or types of art that I might not necessarily like personally, or, you know, it might not be my taste, but to find a way to appreciate it and then teach that or share that is really important. So that was definitely a life-changing moment to, you know, I've seen that picture on the internet hundreds of times but it just doesn't do justice. And that's another reason why it's good to go on these trips because, you know, I would have never made the effort to go and see the Night Watch. But by seeing it has completely changed my view on the entire style and on Rembrandt and all of those things. I mean, I stood there for a good 15, 20 minutes just with my jaw to the floor because it's (laughs) massive and it is so incredibly detailed and it's mind-blowing. 
And I hope to find more pieces of art that blow my mind and humble me. So for that trip specifically, definitely the Night Watch. Oh, yeah, and you never know what to expect. Like I, yeah. you just don't know what it is going to grab you at the museum that day. And I just, I love that. You just can yeah. walk around and be like, I know what's going to come. What's it going to uh-huh. be? <laughs> Mine was Jewish Bride by Rembrandt at the Rags Museum. I oh, yeah. could not step away. From, I mean, I love that painting before, but like, man, ugh. I just was taking all these close-up shots of the texture and I was just like no. going all around it up and down and looking at it. And I was just like, I couldn't get away from it. It was so good. It's so stunning. I never appreciated the detail because I never saw the detail. You know, yeah. you can't see that on a computer image. So it was pretty outstanding. Yeah. Well, and even to like pictures of like skylines of cities. And so, you know, like you see these mm-hmm. beautiful pictures of European cities and all the buildings and, and you're like, oh, that's beautiful. But when you're actually there looking at it, it is an entirely different feeling to be Oh, absolutely. So just come just so you can experience what it's like just to be there. So Yeah, that reminds me of our first night in Paris when we uh, went to the, the Eiffel Tower. That was a highlight too. I mean, if we could talk for hours about the highlights, okay. but certainly <laughs> as far as a cityscape goes, that was pretty spectacular mm-hmm. to watch that thing light up in the sunset. And what was good about that too is if we had all gone to Paris on our own, we would have gone to the Eiffel Tower and gone up to the top of the Eiffel Tower, which is what I'd done in the past when I was Paris. But our tour director said, no, don't go to the Eiffel Tower, go to the Montparnasse Tower, which has a view of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And it was wonderful. There was champagne and we got to watch the Eiffel Tower glitter because when you're on the Eiffel Tower, you don't get to see the Eiffel Tower. So right. just having someone there who knew like the best place to go. Right. Was, yeah. Was awesome. All right. Well, thank you so very much. And I hope I get to see you again on a few I know. I'm hoping to come this summer. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So welcome, everybody. My name is Cindy Ingram. And today we're going to do a info session about our upcoming trip this summer to Budapest, Prague, and Vienna. And we're going to talk a little bit about Go Ahead Tour and the tour company that we're using. We're also going to talk about the overall experience and what to expect, uh, review the itinerary, the excursions, the hotels, and um, talk about flights and rooming and everything like that. So my name is Cindy Ingram. I run the site Art Class Curator, and I dedicate Art Class Curator to teaching about art history and art appreciation and how to incorporate that more in your classrooms and how to incorporate more works of art in your classrooms in more creative ways. And I actually took a Europe trip 20 years ago this past summer, exactly 20 years ago, when I was a high school student. I sacked groceries to pay for that. And I just actually found the paperwork from it of a round trip flight to Europe and back was like $500 in 1998. And I was really surprised by that. Anyway, it was pretty good. That's funny. This is a picture of me as a 17 year old on my first trip to Europe. And then 20 years exactly from that month is when I led my first trip. And when I was there, I decided this is what I want to do. I want to lead a trip to Europe someday. And it took me 20 years to do it, but I did it. And my first one was this past summer in London, Paris, and Amsterdam. And we had about eight people on our art teacher group that went. We were part of a larger group. This year, I'm hoping for the entire group to be art teachers. So that's the goal. So I hope you all register because I think that will be an even better experience with more of us. So yeah, that's me. And my email, if you have any questions after this, is cindy at artclasscurator.com. I live in Dallas, Texas. I have two young girls who are in elementary school and work from home on this website. So the one thing I want you to remember and I, the, to think about is with this trip, and this is something that when I interviewed Alex today, is before she went, came into it, <laughs> she was expecting more like she would go and then she would have... I would be leading you around museums and teaching you about art and stuff like that. But it's actually more of a vacation. It's more of a we're going together to experience this place rather than you're going with me and I'm going to teach you things. So it's more of a vacation and less of like a work type of thing, like a learning thing. You know, you're, of course, you're going to learn on a Europe trip, but just know that it is more of a vacation. It is more of a, you know, we're going and experiencing this place together rather than a professional development session led by me. which, you know, you'll have lots of conversations with me and that sort of thing. And I'm happy to share, you know, whatever (laughs) knowledge I have, but it's not a very guided experience where I will lead you kind of through. You have a lot of freedom to do what you want, which I'll talk about a little bit more. So really the key thing that I took away from the experience is that traveling with other people, it's 
about the quiet times, I think that are the most memorable, like the times when we had like a really great dinner and we sat around and talked or we sat up next to the canal in Amsterdam and looked at the water and the sunset. Like it was really more about those moments than it was about, oh my gosh, I got to see the Eiffel Tower, which was cool that I got to see the Eiffel Tower. But it was really fun to be able to experience that with people who are like me, that like the same things I like. To go to a museum with art teachers was a really fun and different experience than to go with someone that is not as interested in going to an art museum. So it was really a great experience, but it is a vacation. So don't worry that you're going to have to like know a lot of art history and that you're going to be quizzed or anything like that. You know, it's really just a vacation. But the tour is led by Go Ahead Tours. So you might have experienced them in the past with EF Tours. That's their school component. EF Tours is the big company and Go Ahead is one subsidiary company and Go Ahead is the adult tour division. So it's similar to a school tour, but it is more of a, not as planned. You know, with the students, they plan like every single minute of of the day to keep those kids occupied. There's not a lot of free time. With adults, they give you a ton of free time and they give you a lot of room to explore on your own. But what they also provide is a tour director, who, which is really probably one of the best perks, I think, of the whole experience, because you had someone who was with you the whole trip. So that is Matthew. He was with us for the whole trip. It's his job to make sure that everybody on that trip has the best vacation ever. So he is there to ask questions. He's there to help you figure out what to do, where to eat. He knows a lot about the places, and he knows a lot about the neighborhoods. And, you know, he recommended, like, really great restaurants and, you know, in Paris, we all would have gone immediately to the Eiffel Tower, but he told us, no, don't go to the Eiffel Tower, go to this other tower, which then looks at the Eiffel Tower. So we got to actually see the Eiffel Tower. So it's a lot of little insider information that he's there to provide. And it was just so incredibly helpful. And he's there the whole time you're from the minute you walk into the hotel to the minute you leave, he's there with you leading you every step of the way. I mean, you, of course you have time away from him, but you know, it was really nice to have someone there that just was dedicated to you having a good time and getting you to where you need to go and that sort of thing. And then we also had local guides and tours. So we would have like a bus tour and they would teach us about the different areas. So, you know, we would have a different local guide at each place who would give us tours of the area, which was really great and give you a good rundown and recommended good food and stuff like that. You know, the one in Amsterdam told us what to order at the restaurant and it was one of the best meals I've ever had. So it was really nice to have those people to talk to while you're there. So Go Ahead also provides the, you know, books, all your transportation, all your hotels, like all things that are stressful about traveling, they take care of that stuff. So you just kind of have to show up. (laughs) That's what I love. Like, and I'm a real control freak. Like I was a little bit weary about this whole group thing because I was like, I like to control what's going on. Like I want to pick the place and I want to do this and that. But you know, when I got there, it was so nice not to have to do that. Like he just said, you know, be downstairs at 7am with your bag. And sometimes they were like, put your bag outside of your room and we'll go and come get your bag. And you know, it was always like, we didn't have to think. And you just kind of had to just be there. And that was so wonderful to have all of that taken care of, you know, the, from the transportation between the cities to the, you know, how to manage the bag and how to manage the tickets. And you, know, you just didn't have to think about any of that stuff. It was just really lovely. And Go Ahead also has smaller groups than others. So I like them that they have, you know, we only had 22 people on our tour and that was really nice too, because you just have a lot more mobility when you have a smaller group. So they cap the groups at 35, but I'm hoping we filled the entire tour with art teachers and their companions. So that's my goal. Okay. So let's talk about the actual trip this summer. So this last summer, we went to London, Paris, Amsterdam, and this next summer, we're going to Budapest, Vienna, and Prague. And I am excited. I've never been to any of these places, so they will be all brand new to me. So I'm going to walk you through kind of what we'll do each day. So Budapest and Vienna and Prague, they're in Eastern Europe. You can see they're the little yellow spots marked on the map. And we start out in Budapest. So the tour is 11 days. It's nine nights in hotels. They provide you with all the breakfasts. Three of the dinners are provided with your tour price, as well as sightseeing tours in each town or each city that we're in. And then this trip is all transport via bus. So we will travel between the locations on a bus. 
So the first day you arrive in Budapest, and if you book your flights with Go Ahead, they pick you up at the airport. Or actually, you can set it up even if you didn't book your flights for them. But they show up. You have your name on a card. They pick you up. They take you to the hotel. Once you get to the hotel, your tour director's there, gets you set up, tells you what to do that day, like gives you some tips on what to eat for lunch or what you can do. And then you have a dinner the night before. This is like the welcome dinner. So everybody's arriving at different times on the first day, but the tour director is there the whole day at the hotel. They do not leave that hotel lobby until every single person has arrived and they greet every single person individually. We arrived at like 6 a.m. And so we had the whole day that first day in London. So a lot of the times you'll take an overnight flight and you'll arrive like first thing in the morning, which is really good for your jet lag to kind of start a day. It's You're pretty exhausted by the end of that day, but it will help you kind of get your foot on the right spot. So it's good to arrive the morning on the first day. And then you meet everybody at dinner that night. You know, they provide really good food. All of the meals that we had provided were pretty yummy. There was some local cuisine that we you know, that was questionable, but that was just one of those like European taste versus our taste situations. But all of the breakfasts were just phenomenal and stuff like that. So you meet, they, and they usually always have wine and beer at the dinners too. So we meet, and then the tour director sort of gives you an overview. Everybody gets introduced and stuff like that. And then the next day we go on a guided tour of Budapest. So every, basically this is what we do on, in every city. We arrive, we have some sort of welcome dinner usually, or I think one of them is not a welcome dinner. It's like a drinks thing. But, and then the first full day you're there in that city, they give you a tour. So it's usually a bus tour where they drive you around and show you the sites. And then you go into some of the places, you stop and do some like pictures in different places. Like we stopped at the Eiffel Tower and took pictures and stuff like that. So you can see that you go in or you'd see kind of a get a good feel for the whole town. And then you have a local guide that's there to guide you around. And then that same day, you have a free evening in Budapest, or you can add the excursion, which is the walk behind the Iron Curtain, which is a tour of communist Hungary. And you end up going to the House of Terror Museum with that excursion. So the excursions are add-on, they're extra, but it's usually the tour guide who led your morning will take you on the excursion. Sometimes it'll be the tour, your main tour guide and tour manager or tour director who will take you on the tour. Or sometimes it'll be a local guide that'll take you. So you just continue on with them and, or you can just have the free day to yourself. And then day four, you can have a full free day in Budapest to do whatever you want to do. And what was great about this in this past summer is, you know, I didn't know exactly what to expect. And I think what was really nice about it is we kind of came together and came apart in different ways. So like, one day, you know, I wanted to do this one museum and so did this other person. So we went together and then these other two people wanted to do this. And so they went together. So there's always whatever you wanted to do that day. There was always somebody else who also wanted to do that thing too, but you didn't feel pressure to go do the thing that everybody else was doing. Like you really felt like you could do what you wanted and you would always have a companion if you wanted to. I'm a very strong introvert. So there was time where I just like, I have to be alone right now. So I took some like alone time with myself as well. So There is that freedom to sort of come together and apart in different ways. And that was really lovely. I got to spend good quality time with every single person in different ways and doing different things. And we were all doing things that we just wanted to do that day. And no one felt any pressure. So that's what's great about this experience is you really can do what you want. And then you, but you have the tour manager, the tour guide to give you some ideas. You know, for example, one of the girls who went on the trip really was on her bucket list to go to the Anne Frank house, but to get to the Anne Frank house, you have to buy tickets well in advance. It's very hard to get tickets and she missed the chance to get tickets before, but because the tour director was there, he gave her some advice on how to get there. And she, she arrived at a specific time and she was able to get tickets and was able to go to the Anne Frank house, which she might not have been able to do had she not had that tour manager there. So it's really good to have people there to sort of help you determine what is it that you really want out of the experience and how can we best help you do that. So full free day in Budapest, the excursion on Budapest Day four is a liquor and wine tasting with dinner. And this Unicum is their national drink of Hungary. 
and it's what did it say it was a lot of different flavors and you get tour of the museum of all the little bottles and you have dinner you get to sample the drink and then you have dinner with wine pairings and then you get to visit this Unicum Heritage Visitor Center Museum so it's kind of a fun little excursion in there I always loved the dinner ones we had you know the dinner ones you just try food you wouldn't normally try and you get you know to get kind of pampered and catered to and they kind of take you around and you get to do lovely things so I liked it so just a little bit more about Budapest it's population of almost two million people it turns out it's actually there it's Buda and Pest are two different places and it's like the whole area is like Budapest which I never knew and it's been named one of the most beautiful and idyllic places in Europe has the Danube River which one of the actually the Vienna is on the Danube River as well and one of the excursions is a cruise down the river cafe culture and then it has a lot of architectural diversity. So one of the best things about traveling to Europe, if you haven't already traveled to Europe, is that you know the architecture there is out of this world and every town and every city in Europe has its own sort of feel for the architecture. And just being in the space and experiencing it yourself is really fun and exciting. So I really can't wait to go to Budapest. It's just been on my bucket list for a while. One of the hotels that they have listed for Budapest is Art Hotel. And I don't know if this will be our actual hotel because I checked the London trip, the one we went on, and one of the hotels was not the same one we did. So this is the ones they usually do, but we might not be. But the hotels, just to give you an idea, were really nicer than I expected because I've traveled in student groups before. That was the only other group travel I'd done. And the student hotels were never very nice. You know, they were just sort of budget hotels. But these are, they were very nice. They were very comfortable. The beds were comfortable. The breakfasts were delicious. Every type of food you can imagine, like all sorts of like crepe bars and omelet bars and all sorts of different wonderful coffees. And and usually the breakfast had, you know, I think all of them had wait staff where you could get a cappuccino and things like that. So the hotels were super nice. You know, some of them were smaller than the others because you're in Europe, the hotels are going to be kind of smaller, but they were much more comfortable than I expected. And I really liked that. So this is one of the hotels that they usually stay at in Budapest. It's not guaranteed that this is our hotel, but that is the one they listed. Okay. So once you leave Budapest, so we spend three days in Budapest, then we take the bus to Vienna and we stop at, and I don't know how to say this town. I should have looked it up before. (laughs) Centendre en route to Vienna. And it's supposed to be a very charming small town. We'll have lunch and you have some free time to walk around this small town and then arrive in Vienna. And then Vienna in Austria the next day. So we don't have a welcome dinner that day, it doesn't look like. I knew there wasn't a welcome. You don't have dinner in every night. Okay, then day six, that's when you do the guided tour. So usually the first full day in the town. And then it's in the morning. So we left around seven, I think most mornings or eight. And then we're done by like 12 or one. And then we had the rest of the day free. So this one you travel or you get to enter the Schönbrunn Palace. And then I have been to Vienna. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> in high school, I'm like, wait a minute, I've been to Vienna. That name, I didn't realize that palace. Maybe. So I was 18. That was 20 years ago. I don't even remember. So Vienna is very well known for its palaces. And then you get to enjoy an afternoon on your own, or and then you can enjoy the excursion of the Viennese Hurigen Hurigen evening, which is another like wine tasting type of thing. That's a type of like wine tavern. And you get to try local wines with that one. Then the Vienna full day, the excursion is the Danube River cruise, which you actually leave Vienna and you go to like some town and monastery about an hour and a half away. So with these, you have to be careful. Like if you really wanted to spend good quality time in Vienna, be careful to sign up for the full day excursions because then you're going to lose time in Vienna. But it's surely beautiful, but then you also lose time in the main town you're in. So it's just one of those things to think about while you're when you're planning, whether or not you want to do the excursions. So I know I'm signed up for the different, the two dinner ones. And then the, one of the walking tours, I can't remember which one of the walking tours I signed up for. I kept wanting, I wanted to do them both. The hotel that it listed for Vienna was the Courtyard Marriott. So that's kind of a brand we recognize. And these are the only two pictures I could find of them, but looked pretty good. And then here is more information about the excursions in Vienna. The Hurigen evening, that's the the locally made wine. And then they have a night of music, food, and entertainment. So I'm excited about that where, and you get to ride the Ferris wheel. So you can see the Ferris wheel there, get to do that on that excursion. 
And then the Danny River cruise, you go down and you stop in different places, have lunch, you do a wine tasting, and then you also visit the monastery and then just enjoy the scenery from the boat. So Vienna is home to more than 100 museums, and it has been voted the world's most livable city nine years in a row. Everybody I talk to that's been to Vienna says that it's just absolutely beautiful, especially for music lovers, because it is the home of Mozart and Beethoven, also Sigmund Freud. All right, and then the last stop on the trip is Prague. So we drive on bus from Vienna to Prague, and then first day in Prague, there's the pattern here as you take the guided tour. And then it looks like you go into the Prague Castle, and then you just enjoy the sights on the other stuff. Then the last day in Prague is a full day in Prague, or you can also visit the Chateau Sierkrov or do the walking tour of the Jewish Quarter. And the Jewish Quarter is there's a Jewish neighborhood, and you basically, you have lunch at a local restaurant, and then you visit the Jewish Museum of Prague in addition to walking tour of the area. And then the Chateau is like a old 17th century residence and you get a tour you get dinner and you get music so that looks pretty lovely too but it says there was no heating and air conditioning on that one so I was a little bit worried (laughs) it's in the middle of summer but I don't think it's too hot in Prague in the summer I was looking at the weather today it was Budapest was the warmest place and said the temperatures were in the low 80s in Budapest every Prague and Vienna were cooler So Prague is full of bridges, cathedrals, gold-tipped towers. It's called the City of a Hundred Spires. And it's apparently one of the most charming and colorful cities in Europe. And that 14% of the city inhabitants are foreigners. I think a lot of people move to Prague. It's a really kind of vital cultural place. So that is the trip. Oh, here's the hotel. Hotel NH Prague City. This one looked the most basic of the three, but it did have a pool, which I appreciate. But the breakfast looked totally delicious with all the pastries. So yeah, I was surprised that the hotel, like two of them had pools, they had fitness centers, like they were not the type of hotels that I expected. They were much nicer. So it's awesome. And then you leave on the last day, the go ahead helps you leave. They give you a transportation to the airport and then tell you what time to be there. And then you take the bus or you take a private taxi or whatever they set up for you. And then you go to the airport and you leave. You also can extend your stay, you know, on the front end or the back end if you wanted to. This trip says extend your stay to Salzburg, but this trip doesn't have, this one in July doesn't have the Salzburg extension. So that is the itinerary. I'm really excited about it because again, these are places I really haven't visited. And of course I say, I think I've visited Vienna, but it was like probably really short. I have to go back and look at my paperwork for that trip again. But if you want to join us, we're going to talk more about the flights and the rooming and stuff. But this is how to join. You go to grouptoursite.com slash artclasscurator, or you can also call the tour consultant at this number here on the screen, 1-800-438-7672, and then reference our tour number, 685-18235. If you, they're really easy to talk to. They're very helpful, especially if you have questions about like your dietary needs. You know, there were people who were gluten-free or had dairy allergies or different types of allergies, and they were able to accommodate most everybody's health or everybody's dietary needs, especially in Europe when, you know, the these cities are big cities, they're able to handle these sort of requests. So if you have any dietary needs, they were able to take care of that for you. You'll have to do your airplane food one yourself when you communicate with the airlines after they've booked your ticket. But as far as the food on the tour and the covered meals, they take care of that for you. Or you can reserve online at group tour site at artclasscurator.com. The price for the tour is the base price is 2349 And that includes the nine hotel nights, the transportation to and from the airport. It doesn't include the airport. That's when you book your flights. That includes that. It includes the breakfasts, the guided tours, the travel between the cities, that sort of thing. It's based on double occupancy. So that is the price if you are rooming with somebody. If you are wanting to room alone, it is an extra, I think, $530 or $580, one of those two. I don't remember exactly. And then any of those excursions that I mentioned are extra. So those are like between $69 and $129, I think, depending on which excursion it is and what's included. But all of those prices are listed on the website if you wanted to add those on. So additional prices you would need are, you know, your tickets. You can either book those through, go ahead, or you can book those on your own. Your lunches, most days, I think one of the excursions is covers lunch, but everything else doesn't. And then, you know, your 
on your free days, whatever you want to do that day. So if you want to go to a certain museum and has a ticket price or you want to, whatever you want to do, you know, in my souvenirs and snacks and coffees and things like that, you'll find, you know, you'll need money during the trip for that sort of thing. And then dinners for everything but those three dinners. There is a payment plan, which is great about Go Ahead is they have that payment plan. And if you book it now, there's nine payments of two twenty seven sixty six, And then of course, if you have a higher price because of your excursions, that will go up a little bit. So let me tell you a little bit about finding, if you are interested in finding a roommate, um, <laughs> yeah, that picture is Alex and Katie from this past trip. They both emailed me separately asking if there was anybody that was looking for a roommate and they both were and they roomed together and now they're great friends and they're even planning future travel together. So they've made good friends from the trip. So if you are wanting to go and you're wanting to go alone and, and you want to find a roommate, just email me, cindy at artclasscurator.com. And then I'll keep a list of everybody who's interested and then kind of hook you up if, if we find a match. And then when you register online, you have to register a single and it'll give your $500 extra total on your bill. But then when you call them and tell them who you're going to room with, once you find your roommate, then they'll take that off and they'll sign you your roommate in their system. So you have to sign up single first, but you don't have to pay that right away. You have until, the only thing you have to pay immediately is the $300 deposit. Everything else you have until I think 60 days before to pay. Yes, we'll do our best to help you find a roommate if you need one. When it comes to flights, you can book your flights through Go Ahead or you can book your own flights. So I checked, price compared the flights today and Go Ahead was telling me 1600 for tickets from Dallas. And then I went to kayak.com, which is where I find good plane deals. And it was the exact same. It was like the cheapest one was like 1550. And then there was, it was between 1550 and 1680. So the flights were about the same as if I were to book them on my own. However, you can set up flight watches to watch flights and get really good deals. So if you are interested in saving some money, you can book them on your own. There's a great app called Hopper. I've gotten some really, really cheap flights on Hopper. One year or a couple of years ago, me and my husband flew round trip to Italy for $450 or 425 I think, round trip both ways So or total. So you can watch your flights on Hopper and then it will tell you like, this is a really good price. It's not going to get any lower. They'll say, oh, you know, if you wait two more weeks, it'll go up $80. If you you know, they really have a good eye on those. So you can book your own flights to save a little bit of money. And then you can add on extra days or, you know, if you want to have a couple extra days in Budapest, you know, at the beginning, you can do that or whatever you want to do. So if you would like to hear more about from someone who went, I referred to that interview with Alex. That's me and her. We went to the Harry Potter tour last summer, the two of us went to the set of the Harry Potter, which was amazing. But I interviewed her today for the podcast and she went by herself, didn't know anybody, and just was such a treat to hang out with. Like, I really had a good time. We all had a, such a great time together. So that is it. This is how you book. We would absolutely love for you to join us. And thank you so much for coming. Hope to see you in Europe next summer. Thank you so much for listening. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and give us an honest rating on iTunes. This will help other teachers find us and hear these amazing stories. Do you want even more art inspiration? Sign up for Art Class Curator's once a week email newsletter, your weekly art break. Teacher Sarah Warnock says, I truly do take a break from my busy week to check all your links and feel inspired. Everything you share is relevant, meaningful, and also super helpful. You definitely help me become a better art teacher, and I look forward to your emails each week. You can sign up at artclasscurator.com slash artbreak. And as a free gift for subscribing, you'll get six free art interpretation worksheets to use in your classroom. Be sure to tune in next week for more inspiring art interviews. Thanks again to Alex for sharing her experience with us. If you want to join us in Budapest, Prague, and Vienna next summer, visit the show notes at artclasscurator.com slash 23 for more information. When you sign up before the end of October 2018, Go Ahead Tours will give you $100 off of your trip. Be sure to sign up soon if you're interested because the trip will fill up and we are going to have an amazing time. Next week, I welcome Tim Bogatz from Art Ed Radio and the Art of Education to the podcast. We're geeking out about all things art history and discussing what it's like to leave the classroom to work with teachers around the world. Keep listening to hear a preview of my interview with Tim.
I think probably my very favorite is classroom management because I feel like people struggle so badly with classroom management. And it was one thing that I don't know if I want to say it was great at it, but it always came kind of naturally to me. Like, I feel like I always have a good rapport, good relationships with my students. And, you know, from there, when you sit and think about, hey, what's successful, you know, when I'm running my classroom, what's good about that? You just come up with so many tips and tricks. And when you can pass those on to people, you know, especially when you know, it's not something that they've thought about, it's not something they've reflected on. Um, but if you can share those ideas, and they really help people, uh, you know, they're just so appreciative of that. Because, like I said, classroom management is something that everybody struggles with. And so when you have something that's successful, and it can be passed on, it can be successful for them. Like I said, they, they appreciate it so much. And you feel like you really are making a difference with that. So 